me we come, O oh Lord our God. Examination of conscience. And now, let us recite the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault, I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. They spoke against God and said, Can God spread a table in the desert? Can he also provide bread, give meat to his people? Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh, heaven. 
heavenly Father, through your mighty word, the nations are nourished and multitude are, was fed. Look graciously on us, gathered for the sacrificial meal. By your spirit, entrust to us your sustaining presence. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. On this, the 18th Sunday in the Ordinary, the first reading is taken from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning a dew laid all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there was on the surface of the desert fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, What is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, This is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat, the word of the Lord. The gradual. He rained down manna for the people to eat. He gave them the grain of heaven. Men ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. The second reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. This is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth, the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Israelites called this food manna. It was like coriander seed, but white, and it tasted like wafers made with honey. Alleluia, alleluia. Almighty and eternal God, who cleansed the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Gospel according to St. John. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Calphurnium looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, 
Amen, amen. I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To you, my dear brothers and sisters, gathered today in the spirit of the Lord. Man does not live by bread alone. Most of us would say it would be correct that this is what Jesus said to the devil when he hungered and was tempted to change stones into bread. But this is not the first time that the scripture passage is recorded in the Bible is much older. It is first found in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, when God speaks unto his people. Be careful to observe all the commandments that I have given you today, that you may live and increase, and may enter in and possess the land which the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how for these 40 years the Lord your God has directed all your journey in the wilderness so as to test you by afflictions, to know what was in your heart, whether you were to keep his commandments or not. He therefore humbled you and let you be hungry, and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your ancestors, so that you might know that it is not by bread alone that man lives, 
but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Jesus, knowing the word of God and being the word of God himself, relied upon the word of God and was strengthened through his temptations in the wilderness. How difficult it must have been for the children of Israel to have wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. We talked briefly about their problems. Among them there was no water, there was no food. We learned that God did not abandon them through his providence and that he provided them with their daily bread, the manna. The bread of heaven, which they lived on for all those years. In this passage from the book of Deuteronomy, we read that God tested their faithfulness. God tells them that he has given them commandments and that they will suffer many afflictions on their journey by God to see whether they would keep his commandments or not. My brothers and sisters, each of us are on a journey, whether it be for 40 years, 60 years or longer, and each of us on our journey will have trials, tribulations, afflictions, which will affect our physical, mental, and emotional well-being. When one feels the heaviness of these difficulties and problems, it is only human that one would ask, why me, God? Many get angry at God, turn away from God, and even forsake God. But the question is asked, were any of us promised a life without problems or difficulties? You know, being human, when I get down emotionally, depressed, and think that God doesn't love me, I consider Job, who had lost everything, his family, his livelihood, and even his health. Through all his trials and tribulations that he endured, Job stayed faithful unto God, and in the end, God not only restored Job back to his original state, but that he blessed Job even more. None of us are exempt from suffering and pain, but I would say that the one who seeks God and the promises that he has made as found in Holy Scripture, is the one who will find the ointment that will bind all wounds. Yes, it is true that man does not live by bread alone in a physical sense, but is enriched spiritually with the living bread of the Word of God as Jesus proclaimed his good news. I find that when I am down, God gives me words to help pick me up. When I get angry, God gives me words of love and understanding that can take away that anger. When I feel alone and I reach out to God in prayer, He comes to me with His words and with His presence. I am not saying that any one of us will ever be free of disappointments or setbacks. But I do believe that we can all find comfort in the Word of God. Did not Jesus say, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you peace? <clears throat> and did not Jesus offer each of us peace? For he said, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not like the world can give, but as I give to you. And so we humbly seek God in his word. And as we do, we align ourselves spiritually to him. Just as Elijah suffered his own hardships, he found in the end that God provided for his needs and gave him the strength to, journey, to continue his journey. So it is so with us. We gather at a table in which Christ, on that night in which he was betrayed, offered bread which became his body and offered wine 
which was to be his blood. For the next day, he carried through what he said. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, God speaks to us today in this holy place through his word. As he spoke through the angel to Elijah, who said, get up and eat, else the journey will be too long for you. We never know how long our journey will be. But if we, like Elijah, can get up and seek God and trust in him and partake of the living bread as found in the teachings of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and drink from the living waters that he offers to us, it restores us, it nourishes our soul, and we will have the strength like Elijah to continue to the mountain and the divine presence of God. May we take the heart, the words, and wisdom of our blessed Lord. And he said to them, it is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes from me. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life, for I am the bread of life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. May the name of Jesus be praised by all of us, now and forevermore. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted this day by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, open our hearts and our hands to the needs of our brethren, so that our gifts may be the glad offerings of those who rejoice to do your will. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The whole Lord be with you. Lift up your poor hearts. We Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through your Son. Jesus Christ our Lord. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death, and then called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonder her full light. And so therefore, we join with the voice of the, the angels and dark angels, with all the saints and the entire church, and we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of all men. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. Most merciful Father. We most humbly pray and ask you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to accept and to bless these gifts, these presents, these holy and spotless sacrifices, which we offer to you in the first place for your holy Catholic Church, that you would guide it in peace, defense, and unity throughout the whole world with its bishops and priests, especially Anthony, our Prime Bishop, and Paul, our Bishop, and all who profess the true Orthodox and Catholic faith which comes to us from the Apostles. Remember your servants, O Lord. In our prayers, let us remember the sick, the suffering, and the dying, the hungry, the homeless, and the unemployed. Let us pray this day for all those who are suffering from the coronavirus and pray not only for their health, but also for their families. Let us give thanks unto God and pray for the doctors, the nurses, the first responders, and the health care workers who strive daily to save others. In our deepest prayers, let us pray for all abused and neglected children in our world, for all abused and neglected animals, for all victims of violence both here and abroad. Let us pray to God that he would protect all those who serve in our armed forces and return them safely to their families. And let us, my dear brothers and sisters, pray for one another. And also all here present whose faith and devotion are known to you for whom we offer or who offer up to you the sacrifice of praise for themselves and all their own for their hope of salvation and deliverance and who freely choose to serve you, the living, eternal, and true God. We join in communion with and honor above all others, the memory of Mary, the glorious Virgin, Mother of our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, 
also your blessed apostles, martyrs, and confessors, together with all the countless number of saintly men and women of all nations, but especially of our nation, who live, suffered, and died for the glory of your name and the coming of your kingdom. May the remembrance of these praiseworthy people encourage us to follow their heroic example, making us worthy of your grace and love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering and that of your whole family and order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation and counted among the flock of your chosen people through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering and make it pleasing unto yourself so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the day before his suffering and death in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples and through them to all who would believe in him to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of this love, draw them to himself, make them joyful and save them. He instituted these holy mysteries and with spiritually and bodily in his entire being he again lives among his people. At that solemn moment, so sacred for the whole human family, our Savior took bread into his holy and venerable hands, and having lifted his eyes to heaven to you, God, his almighty Father, and giving thanks to you, he blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Fall safe, and be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy, and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and now sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, Bless and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him, 
All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and in following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen.
what shall I return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise, will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul and my life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Lord. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ.
to Smyrna for 40 years until they came to a settled land. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, you fed your people in the wilderness with manna from heaven and us with the bread of eternal life. Grant us an unwavering trust in you as you are unwavering in your care toward us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Go, the sacrifices offered. Thanks be to God. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which I, though unworthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you through your mercy, may be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it, through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was in God's presence, and the Word was God. He was present to God in the beginning. Through him all things came into being, and apart from him nothing came to be. Whatever came to be in him found the life, life for the light of men. The light shines on in the darkness, of darkness that did not overcome it. There was a man named John sent by God who came as a witness to testify to the light, so that through him all might believe, but only to testify to the light, for he himself was not the light. The real light which gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and through him the world was made, yet the world did not know who he was. To his own he came, yet his own did not accept him. Any who did accept him be empowered to become children of God. These are they who believe in his name, who are begotten not by blood, nor by cardinal desire, nor by man's willing it, but by God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we have seen his glory. The glory of the only Son coming from the Father, filled with enduring love. Thanks be to God. Society will meet in our parish hall. I do bring to mind that this week, um, first of all, I want to thank Sue and Eric for giving me um, help and assistance in uh, preparing the letters and the packets of information pertaining to our chicken barbecue. I know, Sue, you, um, we have those. Um, that will be passed out to our parishioners. Um, there's also posters in the back of, of the church, and I ask that where you do your business, uh, to take one and, and to share. Um, this, this week, uh, the beginning of this week, um, I will be sending out a letter um, for sponsorship uh, to the local businesses uh, to help us with support. Also, this, this week, I will be sending um, a separate letter to the parishes in our seniorate, and probably within the next week or so, to some of the local parishes. I know this past week, in preparing the posters, I saw Jonathan on Thursday to uh, take care of picking up the equipment for our taping. Um, and Jonathan will be advertising this information on FCAT. 
Uh, I do bring to, to mind that we are looking for gift certificates and cash prizes for our raffle. Uh, there are also tickets available today for our raffle. And we are also asking uh, for those who can to make a donation of charcoal for the fire pits. Is there anything that I forgot? I guess not. Well, again, I welcome you on this beautiful day. I hope that um, you might enjoy the beauty of this day and be grateful to God for the smallest of blessings for you and for your loved ones. And we will conclude this morning with the offering of prayer for the living as well as for our faithful departed. May God bless all of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the souls of all our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 